essential points that Dr. Lance Walnow is bringing. We'll be right back. Dave Yarns back here with Lance Walnow. Lance, I want to go in and, and really, I, I feel like I, f I feel like if I can help bring this treat, this prize out to you today, because uh, being friends with Lance, knowing him for a number of years, Lance, creating that empowering story. So uh, you, you might say right to me now, Dave, you don't understand what I've been going through or what I've been facing. Well, I might not know exactly, but I too have had a number of times where the story looked bleak. And uh, Lance, one day we were talking about it just before the break, came and he helped me to take the same story. Remember, the spies that brought the evil report were largely telling facts. They weren't making it up. There were giants, there were fortified cities. But it was what it intended to do. And Lance sat with me and turned this story around, gave me an empowering view. Lance, if you can focus on changing the story to this empowering view and the, and the key that is to life. Well, it, like in your case, to give us a little more disclosure. Oh, the self okay. Disclo don't you think <laughs> the self-disclosure is very the power? So let's open the veil. What was the narrative that changed for you? How did well, you change the it was, story? Uh, in your own, it in your was, it, you know, I just taken on more responsibility here at Morningstar, and I've come from a business background, and it was a point in time where the economy was shaking. So I've got a, a large ministry that I'm working under the cr close and careful tutelage of Rick, but I want to do my best. I mean, I really want to uh, just come into this and see this incredible property. I mean, Heritage, if you haven't come, it's an oh, amazing it's place. place. It's, it, there's no other place like it in, in the world, in my opinion. And we're turning this around, the economy shaking, my personal businesses that I've grown for years are shaking, and then that sense that I'm just going to tell you is, you know, are you cut out for it? Are you up to the task? These kind of things start to come in my mind. Maybe I need to retreat and go back to a point in time where I was more capable. That's where I was. Right. And, and thanks for making me draw that out. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's good. And so, and so, but something did change. And what was it you started to believe? What was the belief system that you installed? Oogala Boogala. That's what you told me. Ungodly belief. How does it go? What is it? Oogle Boogle. Very Oogle good. Oogle Boogle. Yeah. What is it? Tell me how that works. Shall we go to the board? <laughs> yeah, go. Let's go to the Shall board. Shall we go to the board? <laughs> let's take a look. Okay. So the uh, I put in a little A there. I kind of made my alliteration. No, the oogla boogla. I, I think oogla boogla works for me. So so here we go. We're gonna do a uh, we use some various colors here. This is how we test the pens out. All right. So let's go take a look at how the helmet, helmet of salvation works. When we don't have a helmet on, let's just put ourselves here. When we don't have that helmet on, what's happening is you roughly are thinking at the rate of 1,500 words per minute. Wow. You know that? I didn't That's know that. That's how fast the traffic is in the head. Now remember, hope is going to cover your head. And what I said earlier is that inscribed on the in detail on the side of the helmet of the soldier were the campaigns that he had actually succeeded in meaning that hope is when you rehearse back to yourself how you were able so far to get to this place because the same grace Praise that got God. you here yeah. is going to get you there that's why you notice when the enemy attacks you he does a thing called stacking he reminds you of this failure, and then that failure, and that failure, and that, that failure. Is and by layering all at one time when you're depressed, when things aren't working out, the, suddenly you make choices that are disastrous. You quit the job, you break out of the relationship, you leave the church. It's stacking. What the believers learned from history is that you have to call to remembrance the goodness of the Lord. You yeah. have to rehearse what God has done. You have to drive into your mind the moments when God delivered, God pulled through, and you found out you were able to do what you thought you could not do. What the enemy does is with 1,300 words per minute, he's going to be bombarding you with those negative thoughts that are getting into your head. And if you don't have a way of driving them out, then what's happening is you've got ungodly beliefs. That's the oogle boogles. And the ungodly belief is you're not competent enough, you're not good enough, you're not ready enough, you're not pure enough, you're just inadequate. All 
ungodly beliefs have this in common. They create a narrative that focuses in on your present shortcoming and projects future failure out of it. Yes. What hope does is, and this is so powerful for the believer, and this, and this is why the cross is so unique. You got to draw a nose and an eye on that guy just so we see this. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, there we go. There's Dave. You got that, Dave? There's the eye. Nice. What, what, the, what, the, what the hope does for the believer is it actually focuses on the fact, now catch this, that through the cross, right. I'm already, this is the piece that we miss, I'm already dead. See, a whole Woo. lot of the battle we've got is trying to preserve an image or an identity. How about this one? You're already dead. God's greatest therapy for you isn't necessarily healing you. It's execution. So when he died, you died. What you have now is a new heart, a new spirit, and a new identity. What we do is we look at what the cross has provided for us. We look through the cross at what the word of God says about us. And we rehearse that with our mouth back to our heart, and suddenly hope starts to come back into our head. In other words, you have to rehearse in the presence of your enemy. Yes, I am not this and I am not that. The blood of Jesus Christ is more than enough to cancel that out. Who I am is an overcomer. And what I am becoming, what you focus on, is everything that God has said that you already are before you actually manifest it. There's a rehearsing. What that does is it takes the ungodly beliefs and it starts to cancel them out because your focus is no longer on your past. Your focus is on your future, your identity. I, I want to just say this, that some of you have been watching and this tape that has been playing of ungodly beliefs has been playing at that rate of, and I will take Lance's word for it, 1,500 yeah, words Yeah, that's Minnesota per University. Amazing. But I want to tell you, here's what's happened. You started to think that it's you that's saying that. That's the key. Because Paul says, it's sin is no good thing dwelling in me. If I have a sliver in my hand, my hand is not that sliver. I have no good thing dwelling in me. That ungodly belief that Lance is talking about has started to sound like you or the voice of God. And I just believe for God to break that right now, that thing is designed from the enemy to keep you from maximizing your potential, to keep you from moving forward. If the enemy can use ungodly beliefs to halt you, to keep you in a place that you won't advance, he's gotten his job done. Absolutely. That's, that's why like when we say, David cried out, thou hast enlarged me in my distress. I've, it's, it just is so helpful, Dave, to, for people to have a paradigm that what God has is a blueprint for your life that is bigger than you are. Yes. It's going to require the mind of Christ, which is going to be wisdom you do not have. How are you going to grow in wisdom? You're probably at this level right now. You're going to have to expand to that. God's got to give you problems you don't know how to solve. It's going to force you to expand in terms of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. How are you going to grow in character or in the love of God? How does it really happen? You've got this much love. Dave's a pretty nice guy. He's not the kind of guy that's going to beat up his neighbor, but God's going to put you in, sorry to say it, thou hast enlarged me in my distress. It is through much tribulation. We enter the kingdom of God. We may not like the process, but you build muscle as you just, you know, you yeah. lift like 400 pounds. By layers of resistance, you're able to create capacity. Yeah. You build an overcoming muscle by what you resist. So you actually build love as you're expanding your capacity to love the unlovable. You build wisdom in the spirit as you encounter problems you cannot solve. And whatever your gifting is, I don't care if it's, if it's uh, leadership, communication, administration, a hospitality, prophetic, God's going to have to put you in a place where your skill in making money, in managing assets, in expanding wealth, guess what? You're going to need new wisdom. You're going to have to have a new sense of love and faith in your heart. And you're going to probably have to get new knowledge. And as the, this is called the perfect storm, by the way, when God's working on all three areas at one time. Great tribulation. Wow. When we say we're going through a particular time of tribulation is when you don't know what to do right now. You don't have the ability to do it, even when you hear what it is, and you don't know if you've got the faith or the, or, the, or the motivation to make it happen. That's where the overcomer is formed, right there. 
Some of you, this eureka feeling right now is coming upon you where God's uh, talking to you and changing that story that's been going on. Lance will be with us the rest of this week. You don't want to miss the rest of the shows. Please, I implore you, stay with us because by the end of it, you're going to see your life change in a way that's going to be profound in Jesus' name. For prophetic perspectives on current events, 